All right, this is prokaryotic termination of translation. Just a quick overview video. You have your ribosome, you have your mRNA, you have your peptidyl tRNA, your tRNA with the new form of polypeptide located in the P site. Your A site is empty. So the first step in termination is the ribosome is going to come across either a UAA, a UGA, or a UAG stop codon located on the mRNA. Those are the three stop codons that an mRNA can have. It's going to only going to have one of them. So the ribosome comes across one of those. And instead of binding a tRNA, since there are no tRNAs that can, that can recognize any of those stop codons, it binds a release factor along with GTP. So you'll have release factor 1, which it recognizes UAA and UAG stop codons. RF2 recognizes UAA and UGA stop codons. So your release factors bind, and what the release factor does is facilitate peptidyl transferase to hydrolyze this ester bond between the new form polypeptide and your tRNA. So peptidyl transferase will hydrolyze that ester bond, which is going to release the new po um, form polypeptide and leave you with an empty tRNA located in the P site. What basically happens next is once that, your new for form polypeptide gets released, you'll have release factor 3, which is going to help facilitate the release of RF1 and RF2. You'll get GTP will be hydrolyzed, you'll get dissociation of your 50S and your 30S, ribosomal subunits, your mRNA will leave, your tRNA will leave, everything dissociates, and that's how termination um, happens in prokaryotes. Um, another side note, good thing to remember is eukaryotic mRNAs are going to be monocystronic, which is, it means that only one, only an, one polypeptide can be formed from a single eukaryotic mRNA transcript. On the other hand, prokaryotics are called polycystronic, which means they can form mul their multiple pep polypeptides can be formed using only one um, prokaryotic mRNA transcript. So that's just a good note, um, good thing to remember for this test. And that is it.